Hi guys, it's Stony here again. Um, so just for introductions, my name is Stony, and I'm a visual artist that has been experimenting with different styles of drawing and painting. So you're probably here because you realize that you have a passion for drawing and you really want to learn, but you don't know where to start from. And you're, you're not even sure if you have the tools that you need. So today I'll talk about five tools that I believe that you must have as an aspiring pencil artist. I'll talk about some of the brands that I prefer and I'll talk about some of the types and how I've used them in my last couple of years. So let's get into it. When I started out as a commercial pencil artist, focusing on photorealism, it was very difficult getting the tools that I needed. I was following very advanced artists on Instagram and I knew the tools that they were using, but I just didn't know where to find them. I would go to art stores in Lagos, Nigeria and never really find what I wanted. But now with the evolution of e-commerce and more online stores uh, popping up everywhere, you should be able to find these tools um, very easily. The first tool that I recommend for an aspiring pencil artist is pencils and of course there's no graphite drawing without pencils but let's talk about some of the different brands and grades um, so throughout my career I've used three brands of uh, graphite pencils and they are Stedler, Faber Castell and Darwin and I hope I'm pronouncing this right in my personal opinion I have found that Faber Castell seems softer blends easily and seems to have more or better consistency in terms of shading. I would recommend to go for the Castell 9000 art set which comes with 12 pencils from grades 2H to 8B and we'll talk about pencil grades and how they work in a different video. The Castell 9000 art set goes for about $27 and can be found on Amazon. I'll provide a link to all the tools that I recommend below. Also, feel free to use other brands of pencils. Like I mentioned, I've used different brands of pencils, but I just found that Faber Castell seemed to work much better for me. And all these other brands are really good, but it depends on the style of your drawing and what you're trying to go for. Um, so I'm just giving my personal opinion on what works for me. Another type of pencils which I think uh, you should get are the lead holders and the leads. I use this for drafting and the advantage is that you can extend them or you can retract them without having to use a sharpener. So I use this to create rough sketches because I typically like my lead a bit longer when I'm making my rough sketches at the beginning of a drawing. The second tool that I recommend for an aspiring pencil artist is a sketchbook or a sketch pad. I mean, they're the same thing. In my last video, I talked about the usefulness of sketchbooks. Uh, they can be used to document your drawings so you can easily review your progress, um, your challenges and your strengths over a period of time. Now, when it comes to um, getting sketch pads or sketchbooks, there are so many brands that are out there but there are a couple of factors that i consider when i'm trying to pick out a sketch pad and i'll tell you about some of those factors um the most important thing that i would like to state here is that you should never try to use um printing paper i found that i used them in my early years and i found that they are very ineffective and can't be stored over a long period of time so i would I, I would recommend that you stay away from printing paper because first of all the the paper is made for ink um it doesn't really hold much graphite it's not very du durable over a long period of time the first thing i look out for when i'm trying to get the sketch pad is the weight Sketchbook paper varies um, in weight, which is measured in grams per square meter or is simply written as GSM. GSM is the first thing that I check for when I'm buying a sketchbook because the higher the GSM number, the thicker the paper is and ultimately um, the more shading and erasing it can take. So it's usually high quality paper. I usually aim to get a sketchbook with 120 grams uh, per square meter and upwards. The second thing that I check for is the texture of the paper. And yes, again, there are so many textures you find out there, but the way I like to categorize them is to group them into um, two broad groups, um, which would be your smooth and your rough paper, which is um, rough paper is sometimes called 
vellum. The texture of the paper typically determines the texture of the drawing, obviously. So drawing a portrait with smooth paper naturally makes your portraits look very smooth until you add details like pores and blemishes and so on. Some portrait artists go for rough paper or vellum paper so that the paper naturally gives them a rougher skin texture. I myself prefer vellum paper as it gives me a rough texture which I like. I also find that vellum paper with a weight of about 170 grams per square meter and upwards is also able to get me to relatively darker values which I also like. Um, the third thing that I think that you should look out for when you're tr trying to get a sketch pad is the cover. So sketch pads come in hard cover or in soft cover and um, because you get to use your sketchbook over a long period of time, um, I would recommend that you go for sketchbooks with hard paper so you can actually use them for a long period of time and maintain uh, the durability over a period. The third thing that I recommend for an aspiring pencil artist is erasers. There are a million types and brands of erasers out there from the normal, traditional erasers to the dust-free erasers, then netable erasers. And I find that the normal erasers, in my opinion, are one of the most destructive. Um, I dislike how they leave dust and particles behind. Um, so one of the things that I recommend, one of the kind type of erasers that I recommend would be the netable erasers. These are the soft, moldable um, erasers, which um, are used for lifting bits of graphite off the paper. I wouldn't say that these are the type of erasers that you can use to completely erase a drawing. These are only for making um, slight modifications to your drawings or getting into really tight corners of your drawing. The other type of erasers that I would recommend, especially for pencil artists who are interested in going into drawing portraits or, you know, photorealism, is the Tombow Mono Eraser, which has a 2.3 millimeter tip and is shaped like a pen and this is the type of eraser that is used to achieve the effect of pores and blemishes in your portrait so typically it's um it's very useful in getting into tight corners as well and uh cleaning very 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 thin um aspects of your drawing the fourth tool that I recommend is blenders. And this is generally what we call materials for smudging and blending graphite, charcoal, carbon, uh, to get that smooth um, airbrushy look where you can't see the individual strokes of the pencil. Many materials can serve as blenders. So when I first started drawing, I used my fingers to blend and most beginners do this. The downside to this is that your fingers naturally secrete oils, which usually mess up the surface of the paper. Also, oils and graphite don't really agree with each other so they kind of have some beef um, so your drawing might come out looking quite horrible i graduated to tissue paper after a while uh, then blending stumps uh, and now i use chisel brushes and honestly all these blenders produce very different effects so over time i've learned how and which one to use for what kind of effect i would recommend getting a chisel brush for blending as a first step. I think the other materials that I've mentioned are relatively easier to get. By the way, if you didn't know, uh, chisel brushes are those brushes with relatively flat edges. I currently use the Royal and Langnico chisel brushes and they work really well for me. Again, I'll put a link to the product down below. Let's take a look at how these different blenders work. And the fifth tool that I recommend is something I'm sure you might not have been expecting. It's visual discovery engines like Pinterest, Tumblr, and so on, where you can easily find reference images for practice. I have to say here that it's always best to draw from life, 
But as a beginner, I found it very difficult to get anyone willing to post for me just for practice. Sites like Pinterest, Tumblr, uh, or even Instagram help you to find great reference images. And I'll talk about how to determine good reference images for practice in another video. I spend most of my mornings just searching for inspiration or looking for specific reference images on this site. And I can tell you from experience that this may be the best tool to boost your creativity and find material for practice. Anyways, those are the five tools that I had for you. I think that getting these tools would definitely be a good place to start. Do you have any of these tools yet? How do you use them and what brands do you prefer? Let me know in the comment section. Also, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more and don't forget to like and share so this video can pop up for people who might be looking for content like this. As I always say, keep practicing and you'll keep getting better. Until next time, 